It is said that long ago in old Norway, there were more trolls and elves than there were human beings. This is a story about one of those elves who helped a wise and good king. Old Norway was divided into small kingdoms, one of them called Bridalen, meaning the Valley of Brinne, ruled by a king of the same name. King Brinne ruled his people from an ice palace high on the mountaintop with Queen Adel, who was as kind as she was beautiful. Their only child was Prince Melchior, so handsome and clever that he might have been a great-great-grandson of the god Odin himself. Scarcely a day passed when King Brynne was not to be seen working down in the valley, showing the men how to hang the hay on poles so it would dry. Prince Melchior seemed to be everywhere at once, carrying food and water for the men in the fields or helping the younger children whenever they found their tasks too difficult. One year the crops were miserably poor, the haymows were half empty, the cattle were scrawny, and the small chunks of butter and cheese could not last until spring. The king went from farm to farm, commanding that everyone go out fishing and hunting before the rivers and lakes froze over. The men from the castle went hunting with King Brynne. Although they did not give up until night fell, they had nothing to show for their pains but meat from a savage stringy bear. When the king and his hunters started for home, they were caught in a fierce snowstorm, and when they finally dragged themselves into Bridalen, King Brynne blew his horn to signal their return. By the fifth day of the storm, Queen Adel was greatly concerned. I fear the food supply is surely gone by now, she said. Everyone must be hungry. The king replied, I would give anything to help my people. Suddenly, Prince Melchior cried, Father, what was that? Someone is at the door. Sure enough, there came three gentle taps at the door. King Brynne pulled open the great door, and a gust of wind blew out the candles and the tiny fire on the hearth. Who is there? the king demanded. The palace was flooded with light, as dazzling as a million diamonds, and a strange elf stood perched on the top of King Brynne's high seat. He could not have been more than two feet tall. He wore trousers covered with patches, and under his red peaked cap, his eyes sparkled. My errand tonight is to take advantage of your generous offer, he said. It was with great joy that I heard you would give up anything if you could end the hunger of your people. Name what you wish, said the king. We will have it brought to you at once. If I ask you to give up your palace, would you be willing to make the sacrifice? I would, King Brynne answered. I shall not ask you to give up your palace. If I ask you to give up your crown, what then? To save my starving people, I would gladly give up my crown, replied the king. You may keep your crown. Then the elf leaned forward and spoke slowly. Would you be willing to give up Prince Melchior? What? Our son? What could you want with him? The king exclaimed. He's only a child, cried the queen. He needs the care of a father and mother. I feared as much, said the elf. You humans make promises so easily, but find it so hard to keep them. There is no need for me to stay here any longer. Wait, said the king. Your request took us by surprise, but to save our people, we must act at once. We will give up our son. We shall miss him, but we do not believe you will allow any harm to come to him. Do not worry, mother, said the boy. And the elf said to her gently, Have no fear that he will suffer while he is with me. And now for that other matter. Come with me. The elf led them outside. In the southern kingdoms there is no famine, he said. People there can spare enough food to feed the entire kingdom of Bridalen. How can that help us? asked the queen. This storm has filled the valleys with snow, and it will be months before anyone can travel. I have taken care of that, said the elf. He pointed to two long boards leaning against the wall. The upper ends had been whittled to sharp points, and fastened to the middle were leather straps. These are magic shoes, said the elf. Put them on, King Brynne. There is no mountain so high, no snowdrift so deep, 
but they will carry you safely and quickly, and the sacks you see are filled with gold for bargaining with farmers in the South. A few words of advice about the magic shoes. In easy places, use your feet, but in hard places, use your head. The king looked curiously at the magic shoes and replied, I will remember. Suddenly, a blast of wind almost swept the king off his feet, and he looked about wildly. My son, my son, wait, elf! But there was no answer except the roar of the wind. The boy was gone. What have I done? the king cried. What have I done? Our only thought now must be for our starving people, said Queen Adel. Put on the magic shoes. You must be on your way. The king struggled with the shoes. Then his queen kissed him goodbye and went back into the palace with a heavy heart. King Brynna had taken only a few steps when he realized what a difficult struggle he had plunged into. Although the snow-covered ground looked easy to walk on, the narrow shoes kept crossing in front of him. Finally, his legs gave way and he was lying flat on his back, his feet entangled with his crown lying in the snow. He shook his fist in frustration. I shall never be able to reach the south on these miserable shoes, but I cannot return without food. What am I to do? Then he remembered the advice the elf had given him. In easy places, use your feet. This time when he stood up, rather than trying to take steps, he began to slide slowly at first, but soon finding himself gliding over the flat and slippery ground. Suddenly, rising straight up out of the snow was a mountain. What now? How am I to climb such a wall on these clumsy shoes? He seemed to hear again the words of the elf. In hard places, use your head. What could that mean, he wondered. Then he cried, I have it! He had noticed small fir trees sticking out of the snow. He pulled out his knife, cut down one of the trees, and stripped its branches. Then he did the same to a second tree. The result was two poles strong enough to lean on. He turned the shoes sideways, and in this way went up the mountain with the help of the poles. There, elf, he exclaimed. What do you think of King Brynna's using his head in hard places? But now there was a drop down into the valley below. King Brynna began to feel dizzy, but he had not the slightest notion of turning back. He fastened the shoes securely with their straps. He placed his feet close together and crouched low. He took a deep breath and let himself go. I'm flying, he cried. Only my wings are on my feet instead of my shoulders. He bent his knees as he landed on firm ground, sliding gently to a stop. Nothing but the magic shoes could have done this. Thank you, Elf. With no further problems, the king of Bridalin made his way south. He followed a river and came upon a fisherman carrying a large basket of fish. Good day, King Brenna called out. But the fisherman yelled with horror and ran away. Then the king understood. Wearing a crown, a kingly robe, strange pointed wooden shoes, and sliding along with the aid of two sticks, he must look like an evil spirit to a stranger. At first they thought he was a beggar, but when they saw his gold, they went to their storehouses and gladly filled sack after sack of food for him. As the curious people watched, he tied the sacks together, put on his magic shoes, and glided over the slippery snow from farm to farm, with the sacks following after him. Finally, he said, I shall go no farther. I shall go back to Bredalin. But now a new difficulty faced him. He had paid no heed to the number of sacks he was gathering. And when he looked behind him, the sight that met his eyes struck him speechless. As far as he could see, there were sacks and sacks and sacks. Oh, why didn't I consider earlier, he moaned, how I was to take the food back. I shall have to take it all. At least I shall do my best. Whenever my need has been the greatest, help has been at hand. The king stood up, put on the magic shoes, and took one step forward. The long shoes began to glide over the snow, and gradually the sacks followed. As the sacks bounced along behind him, he said, How can I ever thank you, elf? In this way, the good King Brynne made his way back to Bredalen.
Queen Adel ran into the courtyard to welcome him. Invite everyone to the palace, he said. No living creature in my kingdom shall go hungry tonight. Word traveled that there was to be a feast, and in no time everyone was on their way to the palace, carrying evergreen boughs, which they tossed over the snow as they made their way. They do this to honor Prince Melchior, said the king. Yes, Queen Adel said sadly. The people loved him very much. Inside the palace, all the guests were told to eat to their heart's content. Then, suddenly, the lights went out, and before anyone could say anything, the palace was flooded with light again, as dazzling as a million diamonds. There, standing beside his father, was Prince Melchior, his eyes sparkling and a smile from ear to ear. Hail, Prince Melchior, the people cheered. Welcome home to Bridalin. It is really my friend the elf whom you should cheer, replied the happy prince. He sheltered me at his home inside the mountain, and now he sends me back with gifts for everyone. The elves needed me to help make these gifts for you, and my parents' love for you in letting me go is the reason why we are the ones chosen to receive these gifts. Please come with me. Everyone followed him outside to the edge of the cliff. As they looked down, they were stunned by what they saw. Stretching down the mountain was a gleaming streak that caught the glow of the moon and stars. Magic shoes, said the prince, a pair for each man, woman, and child. The people scrambled to put on the shoes. King Brynna showed how to make poles, and Prince Melchior helped fasten the straps properly. And for weeks afterward, the mountainside was covered with slipping, sliding, sprawling people learning how to use the long, pointed wooden shoes the elves had sent for them. One evening, Prince Melchior asked, What should we call these magic shoes? I know, said Queen Adel. As I was watching the children sailing through the air, I thought to myself that they looked like little clouds floating across the sky. Why don't we call them cloud shoes, or ske skåne in Norwegian? One shoe could be called a ski, said the king, spelled S-K-I, so people know we are talking about our magic shoes. Our skis will become well-known all over Norway. And who knows, perhaps neighboring kingdoms will learn to make skis for themselves. Of course, that is just what happened, they say, in Norway long ago, all because of a wise and good king whose first duty was to his people, and because of a brave little prince who left home without a tear, and because of a clever elf who helped with magic and words of advice just remember what he said. But in hard places, you have to use your head.